In this video, I'm going to do a review of the Olympus OMD EM112, which is a camera I've owned for about three and a half years. And ever since I started this YouTube channel, I've been thinking about doing a review of this camera, but I've not really felt the time was right to do that. But now I think the time is right. If you're someone that's thinking about buying one of these cameras, or if you're someone that's thinking about moving up to a, a better camera than the one you've got, this could be the video for you and hopefully I can give you the information or my view of, of having used this camera for more than three years if it's going to be something that is going to be useful for you. So let's get on with the video, let's see what I think of this camera. About four years ago I was using a 15 year old 6 megapixel Pentax digital camera and the time was right for me to look for a new camera and buy something a bit more modern. And at that time, I did lots and lots and lots of research and looked at lots and lots of different cameras and finally came to the conclusion that the Olympus brand and the EM1 Mark II was the camera that I wanted that was going to fit all the boxes I need. And that's why I bought the camera. I did tons of research, much like you probably are doing if you're looking to buy into this camera or in if you're whatever camera you're buying, I'm sure you'll have done all the research you can. And one of the things I did, I read all the blog posts, I watched all the videos of all those people that do the, the, the Micro Four Thirds videos and looked at them all. And one thing that, sort of, having looked at all those videos, one of the things that I didn't really get out of them were, was that what makes this camera so special? What makes this camera a camera that people want to buy? Yeah. We get given all the specs and all the wonderful things it does, but what makes this camera different to, the, you know, a Canon or a Nikon or a Sony, etc.? Why do people buy this instead of those cameras? And what makes this camera good? Hopefully, I can tell you. So fundamentally, uh, without a doubt, the, one of the main things that uh, uh, drew me to this camera was the price. I paid just over four hundred pounds for this camera. Currently, they're retailing just the body only for about, I think they're just over £500. So in the three and a half years that I bought this camera, cameras have gone up in price. And I've noticed recently when I've looked at other Olympus cameras that the cameras have got, got up in price. So at the time I bought this, price was a really important factor. And I really don't think I could have got a camera at this sort of price range for this quality and spec. Uh, quite the same. So that's sort of one of the key reasons I bought this camera. The other key reason I bought it was for its size and the size of the lenses. Because as I've mentioned in a previous video, and I'll I'll sort of leave a link up there if you're interested. As I've mentioned in the previous video, that the really one thing that was really important for me, and one of the things I bought into Micro Four Thirds, was because of the size of the camera and the size of the lenses. And as I said before. If you're a lady photographer and you don't want to carry around all that massive, great big amount of kit, then I would seriously look at Micro Four Thirds. But that's just one part of it. And of course, I'm not saying that sort of other sensors, APS-C and full frame are, are bad. They're not. And they've all got fantastic merits. But that was one of the overriding things for me. So as far as specs concerned, this camera's, you know, quite good. It's got a 20 megapixel um, sensor, which... So for many of you, 20 megapixels seems really low because people these days want 50, 100, 500, whatever it is. But even today, even right now, I'm going to tell you that I believe that 20 megapixel sensor is perfectly fine. And it's, 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 it's perfectly fine. And even the most modern Micro Four Thirds cameras only have about a 25 or 26 megapixel sensor now, even now, although there are all sorts of stacked sensors and everything. The other great thing that this camera is packed with features, it's got all sorts of amazing stuff going on for it, like uh, high-res motor. It does shoot at 50 megapixels uh, as well as the standard 20, but it does that sort of within the software. But it does have um, a, a live comp mode, which is something I've used quite a bit, and it does have a pro capture mode, which is also something I've used. So it's got all sorts of amazing features, but it's also got all the bracketing, focus bracketing, exposure bracketing. It's got so many things that, in fact, it's many of those things I don't even use, but it's got so much stuff, so much going on for it that it's just, it's just packed with everything. Um, 
And like I said, there's probably a lot of things in this camera that I don't actually ever use. But as I said, what makes this camera so good? Well, ergonomics are really important. And I, it feels so comfortable. The grip is amazing. So if you think about it, if you've got a sort of lady hands, if you've got small fingers, even if you've got large fingers, if you've got small fingers, it's a smallish camera. It, it sort of it fits perfectly. I haven't got massive hands. So this, this fits really, really nicely for me. It's a fantastic. The other thing that really stands out for me that I love about this camera is this fully articulating um, screen. It's just amazing. It's fully articulated screen is amazing. I, I've come, now come to the conclusion that why would anybody not want a camera with a fully articulated screen? So I use this all the time, and this is sort of one of the main factors that makes this camera so good. The other thing that makes this camera so good is with this screen it's got 121 focus points. So you can focus in 121 different places on the screen. It's that tiny. It's amazing. So, you know, where I've looked at Canon cameras and Nikon cameras and DSLRs, to be fair, and oldish ones, they, they have, they tend to have seven or nine focus points. So you can only focus in sort of, let's say, zones rather than pinpoint actual things. And that's what makes this camera amazingly good. The next thing that's really good for me that I love about this camera, and it, I know it's the same for many other modern mirrorless cameras, but the the buttons on the top, I could easily flick between aperture and shutter speed super, super quick and easy. And I often put the camera up to my eye and I don't even look. I just flick these buttons on the top and it's, it's amazing. The, the drawback, though, uh, you can't do that for ISO. I know you can do that on Fujifilm for ISO, but on this one, you can't. You have to flick a button on the back, and then you have to uh, then switch another button. It's a little bit of a faff, but it's all right. The other amazing thing that this camera does, it's got a super control panel at the back. So you, at the back of the screen, if you look at the screen at the back, and it gives you a nice super control panel. I'll switch it on now so you can see. It gives a, a really nice control panel that you can look at and change your settings on the fly. Simple and easy. Once again, I know other, other mirrorless cameras has this same thing. But for me, for this particular camera, it is really what I like. And it, I use it all the time. As far as video is concerned, because I use this, video, this camera on video quite a lot. And I do shoot most of my videos with this camera. It's got all sorts of video settings. It goes up to 60 frames a second. But it mainly shoots at um, cinema 4K, which is 4K, 24 frames a second. And then it does various different levels of, um, uh, of resolution and, and speeds. Uh, and I, I generally use 24 frames a second at, at you know, super high quality, a large format, which works for me really, really well. So in, in a sense, they're the, they're the really important things. So if you're looking to buy this camera, you want to know that what somebody else uses this for. Like I said, it's, it's got live comp, high res, pro capture, all sorts of things that in truth, 99, 95% of my photography I don't use. I have used them apart from, I've never used the high res mode, believe it or not, 50 megapixel uh, images. I didn't really need to, but the other things I have. So I have made use of them, but not that often. So in a sense, if you're not bothered about all those super features, then yeah, maybe you don't need this camera. But for me, it's great. I use those things occasionally and they, they work really, really well. But the, the, the ease of its use and the quality, the build quality is stunning. It's, it's of pretty much a full metal construction. It feels super robust. It is a little bit, uh, a little bit heavier than sort of you'd hope. And if I compare it to the uh, Canon 400D, this is much lighter with this lens on it than this fully all metal construction. OMD M1 Mark II, but because of the weight and the, the feel of it, it feels super strong and robust. So I've done a little bit of research and I've got a whole long list of interesting facts about this this camera and, and what it can do. And in truth, as I mentioned, you know, if you want to know what the specs of this camera is, loads of videos out there that you can really watch and look at or any of these review sites so you can say, oh, it's got it's got these numbers and that numbers and like, and for instance, has a three inch screen at the back. But in truth, have we bothered about how big the screen is at the back? It could be two inches, it could be four inches. And I don't think it really makes a lot of difference. 
and the viewfinder it has I don't know, millions and millions of pixels or whatever that is going to be but it doesn't really make any difference to us as long as we can see the shot we're taking that's really all that, all that counts but there are a couple of things that i think are, are worth noting uh, so you could be aware of these things one of them is the is the battery and um i've sort of the, the battery is there and that's the battery and the battery pack and the battery goes up to about 400 or 500 shots and in truth it's it's never I've it's never I've always outlasted the battery. I've always had enough battery life whenever I've used this camera. So I think that big huge battery it looks like a brick is is super and it works perfectly well. Another thing that I really think is really helpful, really useful, is that it's got two card slots, which uh, you only kind of get two card slots on 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 you know the more um, uh, more professional cameras, which is actually what this is. This is a professional camera in the Olympus's lineup, so it's one of the best cameras they make. So they're two, what I think are really helpful things beyond all the, the other technical numbers you get about this, that, and the other. The, that they're, they're really good, really good to have and really useful sort of extra bits to know about. Um, so it does have, as well, it does have a, a, the ability for you to um, customise or have your own settings as set on these custom buttons here, but I don't actually use those at all. I've never set my own preset custom buttons. I just take the pictures as they come. So in fact, I'm mostly all over 99% of the pictures I take are raw and it just shoots raw for me. But it, as everyone would tell you, however good Canon and Pentax colors are, Olympus are just as good. So if you compare uh, the colors on the pictures you get raw out of this camera, um, let's say Canon or Pentax, you're probably going to get pretty much a, 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 an equivalent quality of colour. So um, it's that good. The other thing about Olympus and Micro Four Thirds that I mentioned in my, my other video is the, the, the range of lenses. The truth is, for me personally, maybe for you, it's not that important because I've only got a few lenses. I don't, I'm not like some people that, that have hundreds of lenses and, and obviously have a lens for each type of photo they're taking. I just have a couple of zoom lenses and as as you may have seen from a previous video of mine i bought a 45 mil for a wedding shoot which went actually really really well i was really pleased with the the, the pictures i took at that wedding it went fantastically so and and then one of the part part of the reason for that was the quality of the lens and the quality of the image you get out of this camera all in all i would say uh without a doubt that this is probably the or it definitely not probably this is definitely the best camera I've ever used. Uh, obviously, there are lots and lots and lots of other amazing cameras out there that you can buy today, but I've not used them. <laughs> so it's easy for me to say this is the best camera I've ever used because I've not used those other, like for instance, the um, um, the, the, the new Lumix G92 or the X-T5 in Fujifilm or the, any of those sort of the Canon or 5D R or whatever that is, or um, or the Sony A7 V. I've not used any of those, so I can't really compare them. But one thing I do know, it, 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 they, if they don't, for me at least, if they don't have an articulated screen like this, then I won't even look at them. They, they, they're not worth having because I love that. That's so important to me because, as you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I shoot a lot of my photos vertically, and I can then just open that up. And I don't have to. It doesn't have to be eye level. It, it it could be down here. It could be anywhere. It could be right on my knees, and I can get that shot by just looking at this viewfinder like that. That's what makes this. That's what makes this camera stand out for me. I know it's not an exhaustive review, uh, and I know I've not gone through all of the specs and everything about this camera, or even showing you me taking some pictures out in the wild. That's because it's such a horrible day outside. It's raining, uh, as it always is in in England. Uh, and and it's I can't really get out today. That's why I'm doing it indoors. Um, I hope that that it's been helpful. Hopefully, it's another video that you can watch to satisfy yourself if the OMD EM1 Mark II is a camera that you will be interested in spending your money on. As I said, they're reasonable value. Obviously, you can get the OM um, the EM1 Mark III, uh, which is obviously I think it's twice the price or nearly. And if you really feel, if you really got lots of money, then you could buy the own one. Uh, and obviously, that would be that would be the camera that I would really love to have. 
Uh, but obviously for money, no object, but money is an object. So I, you have to sort of pack your cloth accordingly. Uh, yeah, once again, I hope that's been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope, um, uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed it, you could always give it a like. That would be super nice. And if you like um, th this photographic content that I produce, then you could always subscribe to the channel. It's free. It's completely free to do that. That would be amazing if you did. Uh, once again, thank you very much for listening and for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.